Good evening and welcome to Kamina Television News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo to present our top stories in the news tonight. New Apostolic Church Chief Apostle rejected for introducing homosexuality. Former President Edgar Lungu hails President Hagainde Hichilema for maintaining the National Day of Prayer. UPND acknowledges challenges of women participation in politics. In international news, former Ivorian President Laurent Gbagbo calls on Mali junta leader over fate of detained Ivorian soldiers. And in sports news, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp charged by FA after red card against Man City. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. Housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans. All processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Kamnet Stars Football Club, your local national team, will this Sunday, 23rd October 2022, be hosting Welcome Football Club. Time 15 hours. Venue Kablonga Boys Secondary School, the home of Kamnet Stars Football Club. Don't miss this entertaining and upcoming champions of Zambia. Kamnet Stars Football Club, a team born for greatness. See you there. <laughs> Hello again, another news in detail. United Party for National Development, UPND Deputy Secretary General Gertrude Imenda says despite the current political environment being favorable for women, the commercialization of politics has made it hard for the full participation of women countrywide. In an interview, Ms. Imenda says lack of personal wealth or access to resources to fund campaigns are some of the few barriers that have continued to hinder women from fully taking the center stage. And opposition patriotic front Chulubi member of parliament, Mulenga Fube, says when it comes to equal participation in decision making, the former ruling party contributed massively more than the United Party for National Development, UPND. Then our political scientist, Chalue Kasongo, has challenged women to up, the, to up the lead as most laws are in their favor. More in this report. Women's equal participation and leadership in political and public life are essential to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. However, data shows that women are underrepresented at all levels of decision-making worldwide and that achieving the gender parity in political life is far off. Low levels of female political representation in Zambia are considered to undermine the quality of the country's democracy. Ruling United Party for National Development Party Secretary General Gertrude Imenda says currently the environment is favorable for women participation in politics. However, points out few factors that have continued to discourage some women to fully take the lead. Key barriers to women's political participation include, among others, a political culture and norms and values that are unsupportive to female candidates and lack of personal wealth or access to resources to fund campaigns. I think the environment is okay, but of course uh, there are certain things that are happening which, uh, which may discourage uh, women to participate in, in politics. I don't know what you mean, to, you mean by environment. For example, the, the current scenario, what is happening at the moment, 
the, our, our politics have become very commercialized. And when it's commercialized, you know, you have to go out there if you want to stand uh, for elective position. You, you have to dish out money, tantame, ni, and things like that. You have to feed those people and things like that. And of late, what I've seen, even after you've finished uh, um, uh, maybe having a meeting uh, and you want to go to the next meeting, you say, ah, so. You see what I mean? Now, it, 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 that is very discouraging. If and opposition patriotic front, Chilubi area member of parliament, Mulinga Fube, says when it comes to eco participation, the PF tried its best the time it was in power to ensure that there is eco representation. If there is a party that has demonstrated a serious pedigree which resonates well with the Article 259. It's the PF, because the PF was following by letter. You know, when you, by letter, sorry, when we talk about the, the issue of gender balance and many other factors, we are the ones where the EUP and even copied from. You saw that when we talk about the 2016 elections, we had Madame Winonge, uh, uh, the, the VIP, and, 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 and the, our presidential candidate then was uh, Dr. Edgar Chagalungu. And then, even in the 28, uh, 21, we are the ones who, who, who were the pioneers. They, we are the initiators. They are just imitators. So when it comes to gender balance, even the cabinet, when you talk about the current cabinet and the, our cabinet then, we had more, more females than they have. Meanwhile, political scientist Chawe Kasongo says the majority of laws are in favor of women and the owners is dependent upon themselves to fully take the lead and add their voice on governance issues there room for women our opportunities are available the answer is a big yes all the laws are in favor of a woman all the laws are in favor of a girl child the girl child child and the woman are protected their interests are at the heart of governance so we are saying woman proceed Nirenda, madam Nirenda, we are very happy we are very happy with the the fdd president she has stood for a very long time we are very happy with the the, the other female leaders that we we have miriam kaimba reporting for Kamne tv news Human Rights Commission spokesperson Mwelua Mulea has emphasized the need for the country to come up with strong policies that will protect the interests of women from, from all forms of violence. In an exclusive interview with Cabinet News, Mr. Mulea notes that the Gender-Based Violence Act of 2011 tried to domesticate all forms of violence against women. However, a lot needs to be done. He reiterates that because of their vulnerability of social and economic status, most women fail to pursue criminal cases against perpetrators of their violation of human rights. Rights to women, yes, women continue to be vulnerable. There is need to ensure that the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Violence Against Women are effectively domesticated in our national laws. We are aware that the Gender-Based Act of 2011 tried to, make, to domesticate CEDAW, which is the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Violence Against Women. But I think a lot needs to be done. Uh, because women being vulnerable that they are, because of their vulnerability in terms of social economic status, sometimes they don't uh, you know, pursue the criminal route of ensuring that the perpetrators of their, their violations of human rights are brought to book. And that uh, creates a lot of challenges to law enforcement officers because you cannot prosecute a case unless there's a willing witness who can give evidence in the courts of law. So a lot of issues need, need to be done. It should not be only legal, but we need also to economically empower women so that they can stand on their own and be able to ensure that their rights are protected. They should claim their rights without depending uh, on male folks for their survival. An illegal market is slowly expanding outside Mutambe Basic School in Justin Kawiwad of Mandevo constituency in Lusaka. A check by Candid News found no toilet or other sanitary facilities at the establishment 
posing as a high-risk area for cholera and similar waterborne diseases with the rainy season approaching. Meanwhile, Justin Kabwe Ward Councillor Elijah Mwenya says there is need to move the traders and put them in the correct trading place, noting that should the illegal market be left there for a long time, such establishments hinder projects such as road construction. More in this report. While many local authorities often have their eye on illegal activities in central business districts, illegal constructions are booming in communities to the extent of constructing illegal markets. This is the case outside Mutambe Basic School in Justin Kawe Ward of Lusaka's Mandevu constituency, where an illegal market is slowly expanding, with new market stands being added regularly. The establishment is, however, a potential health hazard as there is no single toilet here, meaning that traders have to use the initiative when nature calls. Okay. Just a few meters from this market is the illegal expansion of shops covering part of the drainage system. This is an illegal structure that they are doing here. So as we appreciate In an interview, Justin Kawe Ward Councillor Elijah Monya has spoken out on the illegalities, saying he will ensure legal trading places are found for the traders at the illegal market, stating that apart from posing as a health hazard, illegal establishments hinder the successful implementation of development projects. The danger of trading values, right? at the end of the day, they are going to claim the ownership of the land that, is, that they are trading for, even when they don't know the future plan that they have. Imagine they have plans to, uh, to improve the roads network in the world. Then someone builds, automatically they want to be compensated. Land experts have been emphasizing the need to end land illegalities and strengthen land policies, as these are key to development. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Embattled Pamozi Market Chairperson in Lusaka's Kanyama constituency, Given Miyanda, has defended himself against allegations from market traders that he is misappropriating funds meant for electricity at the market contributed by traders. In an interview, Mr. Miyanda explains that the market recently had prepaid meters installed, adding that the market had over 140,000 kwacha in debt before the prepaid meters were installed, stating that the power utility company Zesco cuts 40% every time units are loaded to go towards servicing the debt. Meanwhile, the said chairperson adds that market chairmanship is inherited by those in the ruling party of the day, adding that he does not need to be elected by traders, as he, is, as he says this is stipulated in the cooperative market regulations. More in this report. Pamwazi Market in Lusaka's Kanyama constituency has been in the limelight of recent, following wrangles at the market between traders and their chairman given Mianda, whom they accuse of not having been elected as per the requirement at the cooperative market and also of misappropriating funds meant for electricity. The traders have further been bemoaning frequent blackouts at the market, which they say do not reflect the contributions they have been putting together as a market for electricity. In an interview, market chairperson Given Mianda explains that the market carried over about 140,000 kwacha electricity debt from the former ruling Patriotic Front as well as for a period of about three months after the current administration came into office, as non-council workers were not allowed to get any money from traders. And in fact, this wrangle started when the prepaid meters were installed in our markets. They were installed in a, that way which we were not ready to handle that. We were just called by the councillor, come and hear this and that. Then from there I said, the government has changed the system now. We are putting prepaid meters in all the markets. The reason is because Kuring Congo is a business of a PF. But PF is like in that market, 140,000. Then there is again, it's a nice touch to accumulate in Congo now. More especially during the first three months, our government, according to the president, he mentioned in a strong way that there will be no cardinalism in the market. Only the council people are supposed to be getting money in all the markets. So we did not see any council person in our market. 
until after three months. But the bills were running. Zesco were being used. So we accumulated part of that debt. So Zesco thought of Bafuna Bazitenga Kongole Zao. Every time Mukagula Malait, Batenga Mu 40%. As you buy electricity, they get 40%. Meanwhile, Responding to allegations that he was not elected, Mr. Miyanda explains that he simply inherited the position as petrodition, being a member of the ruling party. Even before my elections, we had the groups uh, of those supporters of the party who were supporting that party, fighting for the party. Which party is that? That is UPND party. Yes. So now, after we won the elections, uh, the party always, it's like we inherit this, these issues. But MMT, but Dinga market during that tenure was MMD supporters. When PF came, but many banali Dinga they were PF supporters. So now it is us, UPND. So because we have come all the way backwards, supporting the party, and then we have found it to be at the means of that market, traders. Then again, we are chosen to be the leaders. Other stakeholders have, however, been calling for depoliticization of markets, stating that this is key to ending all wrongs. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Simba District Administrative Officer Dr. Ariel Tembo has thanked civil society for poverty reduction for supporting government in voice and accountability in marginalized communities. Dr. Tembo says the civil society for poverty reduction has introduced the project called Voice and Accountability V&A with support from the Japan Social Development Fund, JSDF, through the World Bank to improve service delivery in the education sector in Zambia. Dr. Tembo was speaking during the interface meeting for Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, being the first meeting to be conducted in Sinda District of Eastern Province. He says the Voice and Accountability Project is being implemented in nine districts across the country, including Sinda in Eastern Province. Dr. Tembo says the Accountability Project aims at enhancing community engagement and participation in monitoring the delivery of education service. He says the Voice and Accountability Project ensures that there is improved quality of education in the rural schools of Zambia and it will run for the next five years. Civil Society for Robert Deduction, with its mandate to empower community through improved local service delivery, has embarked on this project to fulfill its mandate for improved service delivery in the education sector in Zambia. The Voice, Account uh, the Voice and Accountability Project aims at enhancing community engagement and participation in monitoring the delivery of education services. The Voice and Accountability Project ensures that there is improved quality of education in the rural schools of Zambia. And it will run, the next, uh, uh, it will run for the next five years. My teachers here to the community here branch, so that our Bakazi kala mtendeni, bakati pama skulu na makolo. Because maticha wei kasi wana punse mwana. Kuma kumkale makolo na maticha nje kuti mwana aza punzi la bulido. Our aim is to ensure that right holders hold duty bear as accountable. We want, to, we want to raise their voices and we want to ensure that they hold um, everyone who is providing services to them accountable. We're working with the education sector and uh, working specifically in Eastern Province. So uh, for the next four years, we want to ensure that we grow the capacity and the capabilities of the voices of community members. A lot has been learned, and uh, from what we've learned, at least we shall try by all means to reduce the gap between the community and the school. The challenge has been that not all the community members can be brought on board so as to find out as to how the project is moving. But from what we've learned, we shall try by all means that we reduce the gap through the PIC, through maybe the PTA. Vice President Mutalena Lumango says the day of national prayer fasting, repentance, and reconciliation provides the nation with the opportunity to repent from the wrongdoings and reconcile with God. 
The vice president who represented President Hakainde Hichilema at the service says it is only when people repent and reconcile that their prayers can be meaningful. Meanwhile, Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, EFZ, Chairperson Bishop Paul Mososo emphasized the need for people to work hard in order to fight poverty. The National Day of Prayer is being observed under the theme promoting national unity, peace, and integration for a prosperous Zambia through hard work. More in this report. Scores of Lusaka residents, among them government officials, former government officials, the clergy, the former First Lady Esther Lungu, and others gathered at the showgrounds to observe the National Day of Prayer, Fasting, Repentance, and Reconciliation. The 2022 National Day of Prayer is being observed under the theme Promoting National Unit, Peace and Integration for a Prosperous Zambia Through Hard Work. The event was also characterized by songs from different artists as well as church choirs not forgetting the grass band from the Zambian National Service. also characterized the event as president of ICOS Bishop David Masupe prayed for peace to prevail in the country. Be upon us, grant us a spirit of peace among ourselves. We know that Father, even in the book of Romans, you are a God of peace. In the book, Lord God, of Hebrews, you are the King of peace. It is for this reason, God our Father, we entreat you, let peace and only peace dwell among us. And Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia Chairperson Bishop Paul Mususu emphasized the need for people to work hard in order to fight poverty, adding that there is nothing like miracle money. All hard work brings profit, but folly. But sorry, but mere talk leads only to poverty. You want to chase poverty? Work. You want to chase poverty from the nation? Please work. It is not about handouts, it's about hard work. You can give somebody bread or a fish they'll eat today. Tomorrow they will be at your door demanding for more. And Vice President Mutalena Lumango, who represented President Hagainde Hichilema, called on Zambians to say no to corruption, gender-based violence, alcohol and substance abuse, as well as falsehood and insults which demean us as a people. Our prayers bring forgiveness, healing and prosperity to our nation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this day provides us with the opportunity to repent for our wrong doing and reconcile with the Almighty God and one with another. For it is only when we repent and reconcile that our prayers can be meaningful. The day also inspires us as citizens to uphold our national values and principles as enshrined in our constitution and in line with the declaration of our country as a Christian nation. Prudence Chota, reporting for Kana TV News. Former President Edgar Lungu says God is not selective about his children but gives opportunities to all. Speaking when he attended the National Day of Prayer, Fasting, Repentance and Reconciliation at the Mary Queen of Peace Parish in Lusaka Zimutendere compound, Mr. Lungu says God's works and desires cannot be restricted through space, time or personalities, but that he will work through whoever he chooses. The former head of state has since thanked President Hagainde Hichleba for allowing the country to continue honoring the Day of Prayer and Fasting. Meanwhile, some Lusaka residents have explained that prayer should be an everyday thing and not just restricted to the day of prayer. More in this report. 
During his first year in office, former President Edgar Lungu declared October 18th as a public holiday in observation of the National Day of Prayer, Fasting, Repentance and Reconciliation. This was done through a statutory instrument number 78 of 2015 and Gazette Notice of October 23rd, 2015. Seven years down the line, the former President Edgar Lungu joins the congregants at Mary Queen of Peace Parish in Lusaka Zemtendere compound to observe the day that he declared a public holiday dedicated to prayer and fasting. My gratitude today is to President Akahinde Richilema and the UPND recognizing and respecting this day to allow all of us to continue worshiping and praying on the 18th of October each year. To you, my brother, I say God bless you. I am saying this because the people are expecting Lungu to say this, Lungu to say that. Today is the day for all of us to realize that if we humble ourselves and go before the Lord and seek his faith in repentance, God will surely bless us. The former head of state also hinted that there is nothing special about being president, but that God works through all human beings. God works through all of us. And none of us is special. We cannot restrict God's work or desire through space and time or personalities. God will surely work through who he so ever chooses to use. And I think I've already spoken enough. Fine. Meanwhile, Mary, Queen of Peace Parish, Mtendere Branch, presiding father Evalisto Kalunga spoke to the need as a country to continue honoring the word of God by condemning all manner of acts that do not glorify God. <laughs> Meanwhile, for some Mutendere residents, it was business as usual, but those spoken to have explained that prayer should be an everyday thing, while others feel the day of national prayer should be maintained as its intention are well intended. <laughs> We have to, to remind ourselves to pray every time to know that Jehovah God is the Almighty. Without Him, we are nothing. And for that reason, that's why we have got every reason to worship Him day and night. As a nation, Zambia has been through a lot of things. But God has been there, helping in everything that we do. So we just have to give thanks to him on this special day that was declared. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verses 14 states, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Paradise Jota, reporting for Kane TV News. Meanwhile, Chilanga District Commissioner David Shaleni says government is keen on uniting the country through Christian values and principles as enshrined in the national constitution. He was speaking when he graced the National Day of Prayer, Fasting and Reconciliation in Chilanga District. And Chilanga National Day of Prayer Service celebrant Seventh-day Adventist Church Apollo Elder Patrick Mafavuke says love and unity should be at the center of all well-meaning Zambians if the country is to achieve meaningful development. More in this report. As a nationwide day on prayer, fasting and reconciliation, various people took it up in dedicating the nation to God, Zambia being a Christian nation. In Chilanga district, 
The district commissioner laid the prayer session at Apollo. The prayer session included prayers for peace, prosperity, deliverance at individual and national level against forces of darkness, such as accidents and premature deaths. Celebrant from the Seventh day Adventist says peace supersedes all manner of hate and negativity. Effort healthy to be made. And we are being encouraged, all of us, beginning with me, beginning with you, to make an effort to make sure that peace prevails wherever we are. Create that environment yourself. Wherever you are, peace must prevail. If people are fighting around you, make an effort to create peace within them and amongst them. Do not be on the side of conflict and confrontation. Refuse the conflict, refuse the confrontation, and let it begin with you and spread to the entire nation. Unity and peace are key elements to development, and God is an advocate of peace. Shilanga District Commissioner David Shelleni says God should be at the center of all activities in Zambia if meaningful development is to be achieved. Sudan government, under the leadership of His Excellency, our Republican President Mr. Haka in the Hitlema, attaches great importance to this day of prayer and fasting and fasting in partnering, partnering with the churches who pray a cardinal law and an, out, an outreach to various communities through gospel messages in order to inculcate moral values to our citizens. This in itself means that our churches are partners in the national development in our country. Fellow Christians, the theme for this, for this year echoes the vision and aspirations of our government. And as government, we would love to see a country that is united, that is at peace and hardworking. If the above is done, then our country will be prosperous. The service was attended by all denominations from Apollo area. Sharon Kalimbula, Comnet News, Lusaka. This is Comnet Television News. We'll take our first break. We'll be back with more news after the break. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Camnet Stars Football Club, your local national team, will this Sunday, 23rd October 2022, be hosting Welcome Football Club. 
time 15 hours venue kablonga boys secondary school the home of camnet stars football club don't miss this entertaining and upcoming champions of zambia camnet stars football club a team born for greatness see you there <laughs> Prime plots filled with beautiful views are now available for sale in Palavana. They will have tarred roads, electricity, water, golf course, 24-hour security and more. They are on title and you can view them. With a standard 20% initial deposit, you will already be on your way to owning land Kumayad. We have 40 by 25 meters going for 240,000 and our 50 by 42 going for 300,000. Both have flexible payment plans. They are located 28 kilometers from Crossroads Mall and 16 kilometers from New Kasama's Boom Gate along Leopard Hill Road. For viewings, purchases and inquiries, call the numbers on the screen. Welcome back. We'll continue with the news. Scores of the new apostolic church members, NAC, calling themselves defenders of NAC True Doctrine, DAA 28, have protested against the alleged introduction of women ministers and homosexuality, among other issues, in their church. Members of the NAC from within and outside Lusaka today converged at the district administration building to protest and pay solidarity to a community evangelist who had been summoned by central police after being reported by an apostle for standing up against the new pronouncements. The aggrieved church members have called on the chief apostle Jean-Luc Schneider to step down and threaten to stop participating in church programs and offerings if their issues are not resolved. More in this report. Members of the New Apostolic Church calling themselves defenders of New Apostolic Church True Doctrine District Apostle Area 28 from Lusaka, Solwezi, Chongwe, Zambezi, Mukushi, and other areas converged at the district administration building near Central Police Station. They had converged as early as 09 hours to escort community evangelist Stephen Mukuni, who had been summoned by the police. He had taken to social media to denounce the alleged introduction of women ministers and homosexuality, among other issues. A named Lusaka based apostle belonging to the church is said to have reported him to the police. It all started with a letter titled Resolution of a Special International Apostle and Bishops Meeting on the Ordaining of Women into the Ministry. It reads in part that Chief Apostle Jean Luc Snyder on September 20, 2022, announced that apostles had resolved that starting January 1, 2022, it would be possible for women to be ordained as ministers in the church. This development, among other issues not mentioned in the letter, has divided the church as evidence from the peaceful protests. Right to urge all the members countrywide in the world at large that we shouldn't be following blindly by these leaders. We should say no to homosexuality. How can a man sure marry another man? Uh, the ordination of women in two ministries, the masturbation and the homosexual that they are promoting in church, which is against the Bible. On Sunday, they said we are not going to introduce this or implement this in Africa because of uh, uh, the culture does not support. Now our question is, are we running away from the Bible and start using the culture in, the, in our teachings as New Apostolic Church? We are saying no. After three hours, community evangelist Stephen Mukuni appeared after an interview with the police. He says the meeting went well and that his team will not stand by and let an biblical teaching take root in the church. And as if that was not enough, there are issues of uh, gayism, lesbianism, LGBTQ that are being purported and being supported by our apostolate. So everyone is agitated, including the people that we have here. 
and we are now calling ourselves the NAC defenders, defenders of true NAC doctrine. He is vowed that they will not be intimidated by threats from the top hierarchy of the church. We are saying no to homosexuality, no to gayism, no to women in ordination. And we are also saying this intimidation was has to stop. the chief apostle, Jean Luke Schneider, can he resign on moral grounds for failure to lead the people of God to, you know, eternal life to the God of our salvation? He has failed. Yes. Now, we are also going to say. If this is not resolved, we are not going to allow them in our churches, in our congregations. They will come but will not allow them. Those are our churches. We built those churches. They have been stealing money from us, offering the vehicles they are driving. That is our money. The church was organized in Germany in 1863 as a universal Catholic church by members of the Catholic Apostolic Church who believe that the new apostles must be appointed to replace deceased apostles and rule the church until the second coming of Christ. The present name was adopted in 1906. A question that begs answers is will this development divide the church that is known world over for composed hymns? Tito Kalama, Camnet News. Following the alleged sale of a portion of the Kawata Kashan Kari KCC land, the area member of parliament, Andrew Tayengwa, has called on a thorough cleanup of patriotic front cadres from the Sibo service. Speaking after visiting the portion of the alleged sold car park in Lusaka on Saturday, Mr. Tayengwa alleged that PF cadres are not only working in the Ministry of Lands, but are widespread in the civil service and that they are bent on frustrating government's developmental strides. On the weekend, Kamne TV carried a story of KCC where displaced traders alleged that their trading area had been sold by a former PF chair lady to a foreign national. Within the system, we still have PF cadres. If you look at the PF manifesto, it, it, is, it clearly states that he, the party was supposed to have actually appointed the, the, the people that within the, the civil services system, they were supposed to have been, uh, been party cadres. And that is clearly what is happening. So I think there is need for, uh, for a cleanup. Uh, within the government, I mean within the system, so that we can clear off some of these cutters who are busy actually trying to frustrate government efforts. Dirtiness that is in the system, it's not only under Minister of uh, Lands or actually the council, it's all over and there is need actually for, for the, the, those that are in authority to take heed and listen to what the people are saying so that we can move at a, at a, at a pace where we can uh, give out development to the people that uh, are there. So that Social economist Kelvin Chisanga has observed that the kwacha has been trading better than the South African rand on account of economic measures that have been put in place by the government and the central bank. By close of business Monday, one United States dollar was buying at 15 kwacha 75 in Gwe and selling at 16 kwacha 5 in Gwe. And against the South African rand, it was buying at 86 in Gwe and selling at 87 in Gwe. And Mr. Chisanga says the Kwacha has made steady trading patterns owing to the mixture of varying compositions at play, one of which is the investor confidence coupled with strong market sentiment. And Mr. Chisanga says in the short to medium term, the Kwacha is expected to perform moderately and will also be swinging just within the range bound between 15 and 19 Kwacha per unit of U.S. dollars. You know, performing currently is coming from the support that we're able to see from the Bank of Zambia and also from the other uh, supply uh, uh, string of which we've seen that uh, the corporates are actually also flooding the market. Obviously, we know that uh, the supplying levers at the moment are quite strong and also trying to see that there is a contrast. Obviously, this period around, we have a heavy pickup when it comes to import and drive uh, demand. Again, we have also seen that the, the inflation has to be anchored within the single digits. That's the reason why there is a lot of intervention and attraction also trying to ensure that we have um, the performance within the framework. So if it's happen that we have uh, this stabilized performance, it all comes from all these uh, varying compositions that we're able to see. But obviously the bottom line here is that we are 
basically looking at it to have a, a different shape altogether because it's only this time that we need to make things light. And even when you look at the uh, exporters as, as well as the corporate sellers, they are basically participating actively in the market to make sure that the tax obligation are paid right, right before December uh, mid-month. And again, also we've got a, a dry period that takes place from from say, December up to somewhere like March, where we have got a low output when it comes to agriculture products. So basically, this whole interplaying to the system as we see. But the bottom line is that. Um, there are quite a number of composi uh, compositions that are taking also in, in, in force in this case where we have seen uh, even the investors' uh, confidence has also triggered into this coupled with market sentiment as well. Minister of Finance and National Planning, Dr. Stumbekom Sokotwane, has directed relevant officials in the Ministry of Finance to ensure that all schools directly receive their respective grants within the course of the week. The finance minister says the release of 442.2 million kwacha grant to all schools marks the final grant allocation under the free education program. Dr. Msokotwane has reaffirmed that with the release of the fourth quarter grants, the entire 2022 budget allocation of 1.8 billion kwacha targeted at school grants has now been disbursed. He says the first quarter disbursement amounting to 323.8 million kwacha was released on 2nd January 2022, while the second quarter disbursement amounting to 398 million kwacha was released on the 5th of April 2022. The minister further says the third quarter disbursement of 611 million kwacha was done on the 13th of July 2022, while the fourth and final quarter disbursement was on the 14th of October 2022. The finance minister has also informed the nation that the budget for administrative matters and for conducting examinations is provided for separately from the school grants under the free education policy. He says funds for examinations are channeled directly to the Examination Council of Zambia, ECZ, and not to individual schools, adding that the entire 2022 budget allocation for the administration and conducting of examinations totaling 60.5 million kwacha was disbursed to the ECZ in July 2022. You're watching Kamala TV and not just another channel. We'll take a second and final break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. <laughs> you know I can take Arabic. Yes, my dear. Um, I was thinking of getting you a bogatze huh? for your birthday. Really? Hi, I'm quiet. My name is Yana. Vanga uh. <laughs> Don't worry, man. That's why there is insurance. Insurance? You heard me. Not just any kind of insurance, but Savenda General Insurance, a company that offers superior customer service, highly professional and dedicated staff. We are not just any insurance company, but an insurance company that actually pays our claims. We cover, among others, fire, marine, aviation, engineering, agriculture, motor vehicle, and miscellaneous insurance. So, live life to the full, knowing that Savenda General Insurance has got you covered. Savenda General Insurance. Insurance excellence. Camnet Stars Football Club. Your local national team will this Sunday, 23rd October 2022, be hosting Welcome Football Club. Time 15 hours. Venue Kablonga Boys Secondary School, the home of Camnet Stars Football Club. Don't miss this entertaining and upcoming champions of Zambia. Camnet Stars Football Club, a team born for greatness. See you there. <laughs> In international news, 27 civilians killed in August riots in Sierra Leone were buried Monday in the capital Freetown following a state-led ceremony as families disputed police accounts of their deaths. Coffins were lowered into individual graves at the Bolima Cemetery in the Waterloo district of Freetown 
following a ceremony at the Konwat Hospital Mortuary. On August 10, a protest about the cost of living spiraled into deadly clashes between security forces and young men calling for President Julius Bayo to resign. Violence erupted in several parts of the West African nation, with the authorities imposing an internet blackout in response. In other news, the impact of a strong U.S. dollar is felt in Nairobi in Michael Gachil's spare part shop. Business is slow lately. A strong dollar contributes to making other countries' imports more expensive and more local currency is needed to convert into dollars. For more in international news, here's a roundup. 27 civilians killed in August riots in Sierra Leone were buried Monday in the capital, Freetown, following a state-led ceremony as families disputed police accounts of their deaths. Coffins were lowered into individual graves at the Bolima Cemetery in the Waterloo district of Freetown. Not all the family members approved. We were there at the meeting and we disapproved. We rejected the continuum. On August 10, a protest about the cost of living spiraled into deadly clashes between security forces and young men calling for President Julius Beer to resign. Violence erupted with the authorities imposing an internet blackout in response. Civilians were killed in cities in the northern province, in the northwest province, as well as in eastern Freetown. I feel so disheartened. I'm not happy depressed. at all with the decision that the Very government unhappy. wouldn't take. They kept the children until now for two months and now they are ready for burial. I don't feel happy about this. It causes a lot of trauma. It makes the families just shattered. Everybody just don't feel happy at all. It causes a lot of trauma. It causes a lot. It makes the family just shattered. Everybody now feel happy at all. On August 24, six police officers killed in the riots were buried in a state funeral attended by President Bio. Sierra Leone, a country of about 8 million people, has had a reputation for relative stability since the end of its 1991 to 2002 civil war, which left around 120,000 people dead. In this spare parts shop in Nairobi, Kenya, business is slow these days. The impact of a strong U.S. dollar is felt. It contributes to making other countries' imports more expensive and more local currency is needed to convert into dollars. This is compounding financial distress at a time when the Kenyan shilling is down 6% this year. Sometimes you find that there is an increase of about 10 to 20% in the cost of uh, a spare part within a period of maybe 5 to six, uh, 6 to 12 months, which people are not expecting. For us, like now we're in wholesale and retail of parts, and you find that most of the customers are complaining a lot. The dollar is up 18% this year against a basket of key currencies, according to the benchmark ICE US Dollar Index. The director of this other auto parts store had to organize life with less money coming in. We are continuing to, to lose. If I used to take my children to holidays, they cannot enjoy those holidays anymore because um, uh, the, the, of the weakening shilling. We don't have enough cash flows to play about in the house. Because of soaring fuel imported spare parts prices, some people ditch their cars to take public transportation. To combat U.S. high inflation, the Federal Reserve hiked its benchmark interest rate, forcing other central banks like Kenya's to do the same. In Abidjan Monday, former Ivorian President Laurent Gbagbo celebrated the first anniversary of his political group, African People's Party, Côte d'Ivoire. During a conference marking the occasion, the 77-year-old made the first comment on the detention of 46 Ivorian soldiers in Mali. He called the Malian gentle leader, Kerna Goita, to think of detaining Ivorian soldiers as brotherhood of arms. <laughs> President Asimi Goita should be asked to think about his brotherhood of arms with those who are in prison there. Three months after the soldiers were arrested, Wagbo urged the Togolese president who mediated the crisis to redouble his efforts. During the conference, domestic politics and the 2025 presidential race were also on the agenda, 
if Magbo has not officially announced his bid for the executive secretary, it's an obvious fact. Concerning the 2025 elections, President Laurent Gbagbo is a natural candidate. In addition to Gbagbo's party, other opposition parties include the PDCI by former leader Henri Conombidier and the MGC by former First Lady Simone Gbagbo. Let's now have some sports news. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has been charged by the Football Association following his sending off during his side's 1-0 win against Manchester City. Klopp was dismissed after berating a referee's assistant when a foul was not given for a challenge on Mohamed Salah. The incident came on a weekend where Merseyside Youth League games were postponed amid ongoing issues with referee abuse. Klopp apologized for his reaction in his post-match comments. Klopp has been charged with a breach of FA Rule E3, which covers comments which are improper, which bring the game into disrepute, which are threatening, abusive, indecent, or insulting. The 55-year-old has until Friday to respond to the charge and will be allowed to take his place in the dugout for Liverpool's home game against West Ham on Wednesday. To end Camden Television News, the story is making headlines once again. The New Apostolic Church chief apostle rejected for introducing homosexuality. Former President Edgar Lungu hails President Hichilema for maintaining the National Day of Prayer. UPND acknowledges challenges of women participation in politics. In international news, former President, former Ivorian President Lorong Bagbo calls on Mali junta leader over fate of detained Ivorian soldiers. On the sports news, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp charged by effect after a red card against Man City. When I look at the coming verse of the day, which is coming from Psalms 27 verse 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Thank you once again for watching Camera Television News. I'm Jeffrey Ziambo. Good night.